Welcome back. South Africa has the lowest maternal mortality rate in South Africa, or rather in Africa. It has declined from 150 deaths per 100,000 births in 1998 to 113 deaths per 100,000 births in 2019. But most deaths are still deemed preventable. So what can be done to improve the outcomes? Well, let's find out from clinician and health expert, Professor Salome Masume. A very good morning to you, Professor, and thank you so much for joining us. So at least it could be said some good news. Um, would it be an indictment of, of the South African health system that it is improving, at least where uh, mater uh, maternity is concerned? Thank you so much for having me this morning. And firstly, just to acknowledge uh, Mother's Day and to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in South Africa. Uh, yeah, I mean, there has been an improvement, but I think what we are looking at is that a lot of the deaths are still deemed preventable. And there are things that can be done about this. I think it starts off with the communities and looking at how well-educated women are about pregnancy and seeking care timelessly. It goes into health systems issues that when women are having pregnancy-related complications, are they able to reach a hospital in time or are they finding that there are difficulties with, with, with emergency transport to get there and not finding ambulances in time? And then the other thing is once they're in a hospital, are they able to receive the care that they are meant to seek or do they end up in hospitals where they still need to re be referred to higher levels of care? So it's a very complex system that needs to be co uh, coordinated by the community, by the healthcare fraternity, and also by, by government and the public health system. And so whilst there's been a lot of progress, but I think we're still a long way to go. What would you say specifically needs to be done? I mean, you're obviously mentioning all of the things that could, that could be the reason, or rather are things that can be done to ensure that uh, it's, it's preventable, as you're saying that it is. But specifically, if, if we were to speak to the health department, what, what are we saying that they should ensure that they focus on to make sure that 113 deaths per 100,000 births goes further down? Yeah. So I think it's a multi-pronged approach system. You know, there's no one right answer for all of this. But I do think that if we improve hospitals and improve the quality of care in hospitals and also improve the, the how, how women receive the care that we get, you know, things around improving uh, respectful maternal care, those are the things that will bring women in and not have women stay at home when they know that they should be in hospitals. So I think there are many things that need to be done. But I think when we start coordinating between the various stakeholders, including the community, we might start seeing a, a, a decline in, in, or more of a decline in some of these deaths. Do we not have enough medical practitioners who specialize in maternity, who specialize in maternal care in this country? Is, is that perhaps one of the things that can be looked into, is that we find more people, we encourage more people to specialize in maternal care? So if you look at the system in, in, in South Africa or in, in, in many African countries compared to high-income countries, uh, most of our, our patients, when they come in, when you're pregnant, you are either treated by a midwife or by a medical officer. And when we are comparing our statistics uh, with other high-income countries, they immediately get treated by, by obstetricians and gynecologists. It's a specialist-driven service. So we must acknowledge that there are differences in our human resources as, as a country, and that the first point of contact will not always be the specialist. So women who've got more complicated pregnancies need to then be referred to higher levels of care, and that coordination doesn't always go as, as smoothly as, as it should. So it's important to acknowledge that we, we are not, we don't have all the resources and human resources that we require as a country. Could it also be said that one of the reasons why the mortality rate is sitting where it is, uh, Professor, is a lack of education, a lack of knowledge of what to do as a woman when you are pregnant. You know, some people perhaps in, in, in who, have, who are disadvantaged probably would not understand what is happening with their bodies and therefore are unable to react, you know, urgently enough to deal with if there would be an issue. Could that be one of the reasons that women do not know enough, mothers do not know enough about what it is that's going on with them. 
Yeah, so I think patient-related factors or women-related factors play an important role. A lot of women from the time that they find out they are pregnant to the time that they actually go for their first visit, there's often a delay and our cultural practices have to do with this. In certain cultures, we know that women are not supposed to expose that they are pregnant early and sometimes to their own detriment when they don't go to, when they, they keep this as a secret even to the healthcare workers, meaning that if you have so if you are high risk, we'll only pick it up much later in pregnancy, during your pregnancy. And there are things that we could have prevented that we cannot prevent early. So there is an important role that our education and cultural and community practices play into, into this. And I think we need to also start taking these seriously and improve on the community education that we do around pregnancy. Just quickly before I let you go, uh, Professor, Roe versus Wade in the United States is looking under threat of being uh, changed or overturned. It's, it's got the American, uh, you know, the America itself just torn in half. You know, there are those, of course, who are pro-abortion and, of course, there are those who are against it. I mean, just to get your thoughts on what is happening in the United States where, where abortion is, is concerned and... And then I suppose re reflecting it to South Africa and how we treat uh, this particular case. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't go too much into what's happening in America except to highlight. I mean, of course, it's it's a, it's a very difficult conversation to have it's you know it's as you've said it's 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 splitting people in half but in south africa we know that there is access to termination of pregnancy services but we also know that even though it's there it's not always utilized and it means that people are still going for illegal uh, abortions and people are, are, are still and we, maternal deaths from uh, illegal abortions is still quite high in, in South Africa. So it is an important uh, issue that even when the services are accessible, that uh, they are not always used. And of course, over and above that, there is an unmet need for contraception as well. So it's, it's a whole a discussion around reproductive, reproductive health services, women's health rights, and what is accessible and what is provided when needed. Is it a matter of affordability um, of, of abortion, or is it a matter of uh, cultural practices, beliefs? Yeah, I, I think it, it, it narrows down on the women's health rights issues and, and how empowered women feel and what education they have and, and how, how accessible and, and approachable our health systems are to women that are in need of reproductive health systems. And so just like you might have, an, you might have a service that's there for women even pregnancy-related uh, antenatal care services. But if our services are not women-friendly, women might not utilize them as well. So I think it's a much bigger discussion than just what services are provided by governments. Professor, thank you so much for joining us here on the South African Morning. That is clinician and health expert, Professor Salome Masumi.